the number one best-selling author, David Walliams, Little Monsters Rule, illustrated by Adam Stower. Snow was falling on Monster School as new little monsters arrived for their first day. No one was more excited than the littlest, cutest one, a yeti named Furball. He looked more like a cuddly toy than a monster. One day, I'm going to scare the world, he said. All the big monsters at the school sniggered. <laughs> he couldn't scare a flea. Let's scare the life out of him. One, two, three. On three, they pelted little furball with snowballs. Dunk, dunk, dunk. The teachers were horrible to the pupils. The scowling Miss Spell took broomstick lessons at dawn. Wow, I will be the first flying yeti, said Furball, jumping on the front. But the witch cast a spell. The broomstick went soaring into the sky at super speed. The little monsters clung on for dear life. Yikes! As the broomstick did a loop the loop, all the little monsters fell off. Wallop! Ag! They cried before landing in a heap on the snow with poor Furball at the bottom. In the afternoon, Mr. Kraken took swimming lessons in the lake. Today, it was covered in ice. I'm going to be a sea monster, said Furball. The teacher broke the ice as he dived into the lake. He was used to the cold, but when the little monsters jumped in, they all turned blue. Mr. Kraken roared under the water. Roar! That night, the headmaster, Mr. Ogre, took a class in how to scare but he played a monstrous trick on the little monsters. The ogre told them, On the far side of the forest is the perfect hiding place. From there, you can leap and shout boo. But only he knew that the steepest slope was waiting for them. The little monsters raced through the forest. Reaching the edge, they couldn't stop. No! They did roly-polies all the way down. Do, do, do. The big monsters were even more horrible than the teachers. They fooled Furball into climbing a tree to get their ball back. I'll get it, said the Yeti, keen to show off his climbing skills. But when he was at the very top... They catapulted him into the sky. Ah! The little yeti flew for miles. Whoosh! But what goes up must come down. And come down he did at top speed. Fortunately for Furball, his fall was broken by a huge pile of snow. Doof! The pile was in the playground of Howler's new school. Howler was a little werewolf with a very high howl. Ow! So high that he had been thrown out of monster school for not being scary enough. Instantly, Howler stopped building his snow wolf and dashed over to dig the little yeti out. It was dress-up day at the school though Howler had no need to dress up as he was a werewolf. You must be from Monster School, said Howler, hoisting Furball out of the snow. The little yeti nodded. Do you want to tell me what happened? Furball told Howler the whole sorry story. I can't wait to become a big monster so I can pick on all the little monsters said Furball. No, replied Howler firmly. If you do that, the horribleness will go on forever. 
Howler gathered the kids in the playground by howling, Whoo! Will you help me turn a nasty school nice? Yes! But how would they do that? Under the cover of darkness, the little ones traipsed through the snowstorm to monster school. They scaled the wall before climbing through an open window. Next, they tiptoed down the stone steps to the little monster's dormitory. <sighs> Creak! went the door. Ah! Help! Don't hurt us! We're only little! Shh! shushed Heller. I'm your friend. Follow me and Furball. Follow them they did, being careful not to wake anyone up. Zigzagging along the maze of hallways, Howler found the school hall. Are you sure we should do this? whispered Furball. We could get into big trouble. Ah, don't be scared, replied Howler, taking his hand. The werewolf's heart was pounding. He was frightened too. Once inside the grand hall, they set to work, decorating the room with paper chains, blowing up balloons, and laying out the fizzy pop and cakes. It was party time! Twang! The little monster's band began their first rock song. The noise was deafening. Howler was the perfect lead singer. His high voice sounded so cool with the wall of noise. Woo! 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 In no time, Miss Spell thundered into the hall. What is the meaning of this? She boomed. Join the party! sang Howler. Yes, come on, Miss Spell, let's dance, said Furball. He took her by the hand and led her to the dance floor. Soon the witch found herself bopping along with all the little monsters. Her scowl turned upside down. For the first time in her life, Miss Spell was smiling. Gulp. Just as they were all having fun, the big monsters broke down the door. Boom! The big monsters stood in the doorway, snarling. We are going to catapult the lot of you into space, shouted one. Are you sure? There's lots of fizzy pop, said Furball. How much? Gallons. The big monsters dashed to the table, grabbed a handful of straws, and began slurping. Before long, they were amusing everybody with a game of who can burp the loudest. The burp stopped mid-burp. Everyone in the hall was still and silent. It was the headmaster, Mr. Ogre, began to growl. Let's party, he said. Hooray! We did it, Howler, exclaimed the little yeti. We certainly did, Furball, agreed the little werewolf. Woo! -hoo! And everyone partied until dawn. By morning, they were all lying in a crumpled heap. From this day forward, said the headmaster, Monster School will be the nicest school in the world. Hooray! Together, all the little monsters had turned this nasty school into a nice one. Sometimes it takes little ones like you to make the world a better place. It just goes to show, little monsters rule. But they had all forgotten about Mr. Kraken, who was still lurking in the lake. Roar! The little monsters will return, 
And so will the big ones. The end.